Welcome to Make Your Online Course in 5 Days. This is Day 1. So what can you expect? Well, you're going to be learning a lot. You're going to learn how to create and start selling your online course in just 5 days. Now, creating courses in a short time does take some work, but there are lots of benefits. You can earn income a lot quicker when you are creating courses in a shorter time span rather than working on a course for months before you begin to sell it. And if a launch doesn't go as expected, you can quickly try something new. So here's an overview of what you'll be learning. Now each of these lessons are separated by day. And so day one, which is today, is decide on your topic and your format. Day two is decide how to deliver your class. Day three is all about content. Day four, you're gonna get ready to sell. And day five, you are going to launch it. So, choosing your topic. Now, this can be one of the hardest parts of the whole process, especially if you are just starting your business and you don't have, uh, you don't really know your audience yet. The more you get to know them, the more offers you make, you're going to get a feeling for what they want. Now, there's always surprises. Sometimes you can have an idea that you think is great and you think you're just going to knock it out of the park and then when you launch it it's crickets and no one's buying it no one's even asking a question about it um, and that happens we all have those flops everyone has those flops so it will happen and when it does it stings and you're like oh my gosh you know but the good thing is if you are using this method, you only spent a few days working on it and you can pick yourself up and start something new. You know, you have a new idea and you can make an offer around that. So here is how to guess what people will like. You can look at offers you made in the past, which ones were popular and which ones flopped. Again, You'll have a flop or two. It just happens. Affiliate offers. Have you ever made any affiliate offers that went over well? And have you ever made any that got ignored? Write all this stuff down. Freebies. You can look in your autoresponder and see which of your freebies are the most popular and least popular. Now, in many cases, this might be which freebies have the most subscribers or the fewest subscribers. And depending on where you look is going to vary by your autoresponder. For example, if you use an autoresponder that has automations where people can get automatically removed from a list if they sign up for a different list or if they purchase a product, you might not want to necessarily look at the subscriber part like on that list or sequence. You might have to see how many people actually signed up on the form and that will give you a, a better idea. And then there's blog posts, and you can look at your stats, your Google Analytics. If you haven't installed that, I highly recommend that you do. And with Google Analytics, you can see which of your blog posts have been the most popular, which have gotten the most traffic, which have been shared the most, and all that good stuff. And then you can always survey your audience. Now, you can do this for free with Google Drive. You can set up a form. There's also some different survey tools out there if you want to use one of those. And you can, you know, think of a few different topics and ask people to choose which one they need the most help with. And then you just see which one gets the most votes. And you can allow them, you know, to vote for only one topic or you can allow them to vote for all the different topics however you want to do that but you you need to take this with a grain of salt because you're asking people what they need help with and people may say I need help with everything um, but then when it comes time to actually open their wallet and spend some money on something that they're not gonna be so open about that you know people will accept a lot of stuff for free that they won't pay for and so this can give you an idea of what they want as far as what they need help with, but that doesn't guarantee sales. So after you look at all the data, you need to go with your gut. So how do you feel when you are comparing the topics? Is there a topic that jumps out at you? If so, go with that one. And of course, if it flops, you can start over. Like I said, we all have them. And it's just, you know, there's, it's just what it is. We all have them. And when you do, you can try a new topic. Now, 
And you can always try re reworking the topic that flopped. If you think that is a really good idea and you just don't understand why it flopped, then just try reworking it a little bit. Maybe it just wasn't the right time of year. Um, you know, if you have a really in, you know, involved subject and you're offering that in the summer, maybe try offering it in the fall. Maybe people are just too busy with you know, vacations and different things in the summer and they need to be at a place where they can sit down and study and, and learn that subject and maybe the fall will be better. Um, or maybe the sales page wasn't clear, you know, go back and sometimes it's hard when it's your sales page and you created it, but um, maybe go back or have a friend go back who will tell you the truth and have them read through the sales page and tell you what they didn't really understand. Um, maybe there was too much info on the sales page because sometimes that's that's overkill. Um, you know, people get overwhelmed just reading it, or maybe there just wasn't enough info for your audience and they really didn't understand what the course was, why they needed it. Um, they didn't understand the benefits. So, you know, there could be some reasons why it flopped and if you do truly think it's a good idea and you just don't understand why you didn't get any sales, try reworking some of those elements and and see if you can relaunch it and have better results. So deciding on a format. Now it can be any format you choose. There's live classes such as a, like a webinar style class where you deliver it live in a webinar room and this is a really great way to do a five day class, create a class in five days because you're actually delivering the content after you sell it and you know if you start selling it and it doesn't go over great you can just refund the people who did buy it and then you don't even have to create the content. Um, now you can also create a pre-recorded video. Again, you can pre-sell that too. Um, so if you don't really like doing live calls, live classes, if maybe you like the option of recording it, so if you mess up, you can just go back and re-record. If maybe being live makes you a little bit anxious, try creating some pre-recorded videos. Um, if you don't like doing videos, there's of course audio, there's text, which would be like a PDF or ebook or something like that. Um, because you're creating this in a short time, like I said, a live video does work out great and it allows you to pre-sell it to see if there's interest. But you can pre-sell any of these items, it doesn't have to just be a live class. Um, on your sales page, if you're going to pre-sell something, just let people know that the date that it will be delivered. So if it's a live class, you know, you're going to say this class will be held on September so forth, you know, whatever date, and this is live, but it will be recorded if you can't make the live call. If it is going to be a pre-recorded video or audio or something like that, just say um, this course will be delivered to you on September whatever. It will be videos that you can watch at your convenience or however you want to word that. And of course you can always add to it after you deliver it live or pre-recorded. Um, so if you are testing something and you just want to see if that is a topic that resonates and that people want to learn about, then you can have a live class or a pre-recorded class. And if you get a nice result from that, then you can say, you know what, what could I do to make this bigger? And so maybe you add some checklists or some cheat sheets or templates, or maybe you have, um, you know, a few extra videos that you create and add and, and it just enhances the course. You can, um, you know, the more you add, the higher you can charge for that course in the future. You know, so the first people that took it, they got a deal, you know, it was just the the one live class and you can give them those extras for free and or or you can say hey um, I'd really love to get a testimonial and I'll give you all these extra bonuses and um, you know to send in your testimonial by this date or whatever to get all these bonuses and if people want those bonuses then they will 
um, and then you have some testimonials. And then in the future, um, you know, maybe you offered it for 27 or $37 in the first place. Um, and then the second time around, you're able to charge 47 or 67 or 97 because you have testimonials and you have all these extra bonuses and the course itself. So <clears throat> how to host and record a live class. Um, now, when I say hosting this, I mean actually delivering the class. We are going to be talking about hosting your files as far as putting them on the web in another day's topic. So when I say hosting, I mean actually talking and being the host of like the class, the host of the party. So how to do this. I recommend Zoom and you'll need a paid plan. It starts at about $14 a month and if you're going to be having a lot of people I would consider the webinar add-on which is about $40 and if you're not going to do webinars after doing a live class then I would you know drop the webinar part but when you when you're just paying the $14 a month you are limited to how many people can be in the class and I will tell you that when they it's going to be more of a meeting room at the $14 a month level so you don't have all the controls that you do when you have a webinar room so if you're going to be doing a live class I do highly suggest paying uh, for the extra $40 and being able to mute people when they log in and so forth so um, it just gives you more control to have it as a webinar room versus a meeting room and like I said if you only need it you know if you're going to be doing a webinar in September and you're not or a live class in September and then you're not going to be doing it again for a while cancel it go down to the $14 version or the free version and just add those extras on when you need them and the thing that I really like about Zoom is that you can set it up to record automatically. So if you know, you're know you about to do a live class and you're thinking about all this other stuff or you're nervous or whatever, you don't have to think about recording it. Um, you can tell Zoom to record it automatically when you actually set up the day and time to actually host the class. And with Zoom, it gives you the video recording plus the audio recording. So that's really nice. So that way you can have the audio recording as a bonus. Um, there's a lot of people out there who, you know, want to listen to the audio when they're driving or when they're working out, going for a walk or whatever the case may be. You know, I spend a lot of time driving kids back and forth and doing stuff like that. And so I, I like having something to listen to in the car so I can appreciate having the audio as a bonus. Now, if you're creating a pre-recorded video, I still suggest using Zoom, and you can actually do this on the free plan. And so you set up a meeting and you record it even though you're the only one in the meeting. And you can talk to the camera, you can share your screen, you can do all that stuff. Now, there is a limit to how much you can record. The limit is 40 minutes. If you are recording something that is going to be more than 40 minutes, you can break that up. You can have a part one, and then you can have a part two. Um, I personally try to make my recordings much smaller than 40 minutes and that way people don't get bored watching them. So instead of doing one long video, for example, with how to create a course in five days and putting all the info in one video, I'm breaking it up and so that it's a bunch of shorter videos. But you can create your course however you want. That's just a suggestion. So you can create audio with Zoom. As I mentioned, when you create a recording, whether it is a live class or if it's a pre-recorded class, you always get the audio file. And that way, um, you know, you can give the MP3 as a bonus and just use Zoom as a way to record it. And um, if you don't want to give out the video part, if you only want to give out the MP3, you can do that as well. 
So how do you create a PDF? Now you can offer your students a variety of PDFs and it can be an ebook that is just like a how-to guide and it can be checklists, it can be cheat sheets, it can be templates. The list goes on and on and the reason you want to give them a PDF is because it doesn't matter what type of computer they have, they can still read it. So if you give someone a PDF, they can look at it on Word and they can look at I'm sorry, they can look at it on a PC, they can look at it on a Mac, they can even look at it on a mobile device, tablet, phone, etc. But if you just give someone Word, they might not be able to open it up on some of those devices. So that's why you always want to save things as a PDF and you can do that in Word, just save your document as a PDF. You can also do that in Google Docs when you're working on something, you just save it as a PDF. And so depending on how you deliver your class, which we're going to talk about in another video, you may be able to upload your files in a variety of, of ways. You can just upload it um, directly to a class platform, which again we're going to be discussing tomorrow. Um, personally, I'll tell you right now that I am a fan of Amazon S3, which stands for Super Simple Storage and it's part of Amazon AWS, their web services. But we'll get into that in more detail in, in tomorrow's session. So what do you do right now? Well, you need to decide on your topic. You need to decide on your format. You need to sign up for Zoom if you don't have that. And any other things you'll need in creating your class.